Good morning, everyone. I am very happy to attend this conference today, so thank you for inviting me. Let me briefly introduce myself. Um, I am a neurologist with a specialization in the movement disorders, especially in atypical Parkinsonisms. I am working at the Central Hospital of Bolzano in Italy, South Tyrol, and I get my specialization in uh, the University of Innsbruck in Austria, where I also did my PhD about uh, rehabilitation strategies in patients with multiple system atrophy. Today, I would like to show you the results of the first study about the effects of physiotherapy in patients with multiple system atrophy. This study was granted by the MSA coalition and the results are now published in Parkinsonism and related disorders. Just a few words about the spectrum of Parkinsonisms. As you may already know, um, it is a group of hypokinetic syndromes which are characterized by the presence of resting tremor, muscular rigidity, bradykinesia or akinesia and postural instability. Um, among these syndromes, the most common form is the Parkinson's disease and a smaller but significant number of patients show atypical features and are defined as atypical Parkinsonism. These syndromes are generally more aggressive and involve multi-system degeneration. Um, since these syndromes are clinically overlapping, the differential diagnosis can be challenging, especially in the early stages of disease. Among the atypical Parkinsonism, multiple system atrophy, MSA, is an orphan disease very rare, which is characterized by widespread uh, neurodegeneration. And typically, its clinical onset is in the sixth decade. The disease shows a fast progression and is uh, linked to a reduced life expectancy. The clinical picture is characterized by a combination of autonomic failure, Parkinsonism and cerebellar symptoms. To date, no disease modifying therapy is available. Axial disturbance is a common typical feature of, of all forms of Parkinsonism, which arises at an earlier stage in the patients with atypical Parkinsonism. This figure illustrates the main characteristics of axial impairment in the diverse forms of atypical Parkinsonism. And as you can see, patients with atypical Parkinsonism typically show a, an earlier disbalance in the midlateral plane, which is reflected in the incapability of riding a bicycle at an earlier stage of disease. Consequently, rehabilitation strategies must take into account these differences and cannot be the same for every form of Parkinsonism. And now I come to the background of our study. While in patients with Parkinson's disease, multiple control trials have established the efficacy of exercise-based interventions, and the European Physiotherapy Guidelines provides evidence-based information for physiotherapists and physicians. For patients with atypical Parkinsonism, especially for patients with multiple system atrophy, only little information exists. Therefore, the present study aimed to explore the safety, feasibility and preliminary effects of physiotherapy for patients with MSA. As an outcome measure, we used the instrumented gait analysis, which is a tool that enables the collection of quantitative data of the gait cycle and therefore provides a valuable objective tool in clinical practice for the diagnosis, the characterizations, the monitor and the management of patients affected by gait disorders. Thanks to gait analysis, a large number of parameters can be recorded. 
Um, this figure illustrates a gate cycle, uh, which uh, consists of a stance phase and of a swing phase, as you can see here. Whenever there is a gate disturbance, the stance time increases at the expense of the swing time. This is because patients feel unstable and are afraid of falling. This is also the case in Parkinsonian pathology. Um, every special temporal gait parameter has a clinical significance, which is very important for the interpretations uh, of the results. For instance, the short steps and bradykinesia are reflected by an impaired, a reduced stride length, gait speed, a reduced stride time, and an increased stance time and a reduced swing time. Moreover, the shuffling of gait, which is also a pivotal feature of the Parkinsonian gait, is reflected by impaired two off and heel strike angles, uh, which are the angles between the foot and the floor, um, and a reduced maximal two clearance. The maximal two clearance expresses the distance of the foot from the floor in the swing phase and it is greatly reduced in patients with Parkinsonian syndromes. Uh, the third aspect uh, is the regularity of gait, which is expressed uh, by the coefficient of variable parameters. So stride length, stride time, stance time, swing time, and gait speed, but expressed as a coefficient of variability. Um, to be clear, the more irregular the walk, the more unstable it is. So let's come to the subjects of the present study. We included 10 patients with MSA of Parkinsonian variant and as a control, 12 patients with Parkinson's disease. Um, the exclusion criteria were uh, known Parkinson related gait impairments, uh, for example, due to orthopedic uh, problems, neuropathy, and so on. An advanced HONNDR uh, stage of four or more, severe dementia, as well as recent surgery, uh, deep brain stimulation, unstable coronary artery disease, as well as psychiatric comorbidities and severe motor fluctuations. This figure summarizes the study design and the flow chart. We started with the screening of the patients where 13 MSA and 11 uh, Parkinson patients were assessed for eligibility, um, two patients with MSA and one patient with Parkinson's disease were excluded since they were not meeting the uh, inclusion criteria or they declined the participation. Then the intervention began. Um, the intervention consisted in the first week uh, with uh, physiotherapy one-to-one -one inpatient in the hospital, which was performed by physiotherapists with a specialization in movement disorders. After this week, um, the second phase of, it, of the intervention was performed, consisting in home training. In this phase, uh, the patients underwent the same program of uh, the exercises they learned in the first week, but unsupervised, so um, at home without the supervision of uh, a physiotherapist for uh, a total of five weeks. Um, so uh, after the first week, um, there, were, there was the first, uh, the first assessment uh, post-intervention in the clinic. And uh, after two weeks of home training, there was the um, second post-intervention assessment. Uh, the last uh, intervention assessment was a follow-up assessment, which was done per telephone. 
This figure illustrates a part of uh, the exercises which uh, were performed in the intervention. So as you can see here, uh, they comprise the strength exercises as well as balance uh, challenges, transfer tasks, as well as gate tasks and uh, queuing strategies. Um, I posted here the link um, which direct to, uh, to the page on the MSA coalition where you can find these exercises. As I mentioned before, the clinical outcome measure consisted in an instrumented gait analysis. The patients were instructed to walk a 10 meter long corridor back and forth in three different velocities. Firstly, at a normal gait velocity, and then we wanted to um, investigate how the challenge gait was, and they were invited to walk uh, fast and slow, respectively. This slide illustrates the results of the normal gait velocity. And as you can see here, we demonstrated a great improvement of gate velocity, stride length, as well as, as uh, of maximal two clearance after the intervention. The maximum of this improvement was reached after one week of physiotherapy in hospital, while the results tended to decrease after the uh, home-based uh, unsupervised training. As the patients walked uh, fast, uh, as you can see here, uh, we showed also an improvement of the gait parameters. So an improvement of the overall gait performance of, the pa of these patients, reflected by a great improvement of gait velocity, stride length and maximal two clearance, which was very evident uh, after the first week in patients physiotherapy and not so evident or tended to decrease after the conclusion of the home training. Interestingly, for a slow gait velocity, the results were not so exciting and uh, we only observed a numerical tendency of an improvement of the parameters which uh, did not reach uh, significance. We are now reaching the conclusion of the present talk. So um, our results show that physiotherapy in both settings, so in hospital as well as at home, is safe and feasible. Um, the intervention improved the overall gait performance in both MSA and PD patients as reflected by an improvement of the spatiotemporal gait parameters. The maximum of this improvement was observed after the first phase inpatient physiotherapy and tended to uh, decrease after the unsupervised home training. Um, to date, a multicenter international study, mobility app study about physiotherapy in patients with atypical Parkinsonian syndromes is ongoing. I hope you enjoyed my talk. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at my email address. Special thanks uh, to the MSA coalition, without whom this study would not have been possible. Um, thank you to my team in Innsbruck, especially Professor Gregor Wenning, who supported me <laughs> with humanity and experience during this journey. And thank you to the international collaboration partners, Kamiar Aminian and David Benninger from Switzerland, Lausanne, uh, Bastian Blom and um, Jorik Nonekes from uh, Nijmegen, Holland, and uh, Björn Escofia, uh, Professor Jochen Klucken and uh, Heiko Gassner from Erlangen, Germany. Thank you. Bye-bye.